Hey, my name's Cam, and I release music as Sakti, and today I'm going to show you how to make literally every respace. Now, most sound design tutorials walk you through sort of a paint by numbers approach for how to make one specific patch or maybe a couple different patches, which is great, especially if you're just starting out. Believe me, I've watched loads of tutorials like that over the years, but at the end, ultimately, you're left with one patch. You know what they say, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. So in this video, I don't want to just give you a fish, I want to teach you how to fish. We're going to cover five really useful techniques which allow you to make pretty much any race your heart desires. Filtering, FM synthesis, effects, pitch bending, and automation. So let's get started. Cool, so here we are in Ableton. You can do this in any synth you want, but uh, I really like Serum for Reese's because it makes them super easy, and I also really like Serum's effects, but other synthesizers are available. So for starters, let's go through how to make just a basic Reese in Serum. So we've got the standard initialized patch here, which is just a saw wave. And if you come over here to the unison area and you just increase the unison, there you go. That's all there is to it. Now you can go all the way up to 16 voices if you want. You can spread the detune out until it gets really flappy. I kind of like, you know, a few less voices and a nice tight detune. Just a little bit of phasing going on there. And that's really all it is. It's a couple of detuned saw waves spread in the stereo field. Now you don't have to keep it stereo if you don't want to. You can still get that phasing effect with a nice mono reese if you come over here to the global tab and just reduce the width to zero. But let's go back to 100. Nice wide reese. But you don't just want to have a boring standard saw wave that sounds just like everybody else's reese bass, right? So one of the standard techniques for any sort of sound design is filtering. So if we just slap a basic low-pass filter on here, we've got that moody sort of intro re-space going on. And if you open up the cutoff here, of course, you get way more of the high frequencies coming through. So you can already see, you know, that's fun. You can also high-pass filter if you want. So if we come over here and grab a high-pass 12. Obviously a sound you hear all the time in drum and bass for some cool effects. And if you come over here to the effects tab, you can grab another EQ. If we put these both on notch, have one notch cutting out, and then you pump the gain on this one, you have another notch going up. Let's move these to the higher end of the frequency spectrum, and we have them sweeping around. So you can see right away with this notch filtering, you get another really common sound that you hear a lot in more neuro styles. If we turn the Q up a little bit more so they're not cutting out quite as much of the frequency spectrum. So that's fun. We can have both of these phasing around if we just slap an LFO on the frequency here. And on this one, we can take the LFO one and turn it onto trigger mode. So it restarts every time you hit the bass and we'll slow that way down. Let's just turn off this one actually and just have the one so we're not having any weird interference. All right, let's go back to the low pass and add a little bit more drive. Add a little bit more fatness. Add a little bit more resonance if you want. Again, just have fun with it. Next up, FM synthesis. The warp knob over here has all these really cool different warp modes that you can play with. It also includes the FM option down here, which is just stands for frequency modulation. So if you change it to FM from B, then you turn on oscillator B, but let's turn the level all the way down because we don't actually want to hear oscillator B. We just want to use it to frequency modulate oscillator A. So if you turn this up, you can see it gets a little bit wild the higher you go, you know. Find a nice sweet spot, and also playing with the octaves here, playing with the semitone detune can get you some really interesting results. Yeah, cool stuff. Kind of like.
like the one octave up and seven semitones up, which is a fifth, you know, maybe try different waveforms. You could try some of these weird spectral ones. Move the wavetable position around. Get some real like monster sounding growly stuff. There we go. We've already got a much more unique sounding Reese. The next technique is automation, which we've already started doing a little bit here. We've automated the wavetable position. Uh, over here, we've automated, yeah, the EQ frequency for this little notch cutout that we've got here. But you can go way further with automation if you want to. You can automate the FM amount. Get some weird stuff going on. You could put it on the level. Let's put trigger mode on here and turn it up to like 16ths. And you can move this around. You can turn off BPM sync and just do. Start doing some fun like effects type stuff there with the bass. But let's go back onto BPM. I kind of liked the 1 8 speed here. You can go mad with automation if you want to. Why don't we go ahead and automate the cutoff as well while we're at it. Have it like ramp open over time. Maybe reduce this amount a little bit so it starts a bit more open. Cool, so that's automation. It's really easy within Serum. You can just attach any of these LFOs to any of these things. And if you use the fourth LFO, so let's just go ahead and slap that on the drive. You'll see immediately you get a fifth LFO. If we slap that on the pan, you get a sixth LFO. You get as many LFOs as you want here, honestly. I don't know if there's actually a max. There probably is, but I haven't hit the max before. <laughs> All right, now we got some weird stuff going on. Let's take it off the pan here. Let's take it off the level here. I kind of like it on the drive here. Let's leave that, but maybe back it off a bit. Cool. The next technique is pitch bending and portamento. So let's come over here into the MIDI clip. Why don't we go ahead and work in F Phrygian. Put a couple notes in here, F1 down to F0. And then let's go ahead and turn on portamento and turn the time up a little bit so it slides between notes. Let's take the LFO off of the cutoff here so you can hear it a bit more what it's actually doing. Let's take this LFO, let's just remove it from all destinations. And let's turn off always here. So if you put on always, it will always slide. So it remembers that we're on F0 at the end. So it'll slide up to F1 when you restart the clip. So if we turn off always, then it will just start right on F1 and slide down. And as long as there's a little overlap here, if you put on always, you don't need the overlap, but if you turn always mode off, then you do need a little overlap. So it knows what notes to slide from and to. So now we get Let's slow it down a bit. Cool. So we've got a little pattern here. I'm side chaining it from this kick here. Just muted at the moment because I don't want to listen to it while we're doing sound design, but you can hear that pumping. Now, the other thing you can do as far as pitch bending is you don't need to just rely on the portamento settings here in Serum. You can do it within the clip itself. So if you come over here to the envelope and go to the MIDI control, and then you can pitch bend within the MIDI clip itself. So for example, have this G pitch up a little bit. And this will depend on what your pitch bend settings are here. So let's crank this up to 12 semitones up and 12 semitones down. So that's a full octave in either direction. Now, if we jump back over here to the clip and just have a little pitch bend up here. You can go wild with this if you want, or just have some real subtle pitch bending, you know, over the course of longer sustained notes, just to make them a little more dynamic sounding. Yeah. 
So we've done filtering, we've done FM synthesis, we've done some automation, we've done some pitch bending, and we haven't even really started playing around with the effects section. So there's a lot you can do in here. The sort of go-tos that I like to use in bass sound design, obviously you want some distortion. Usually I like to just stick with tube or one of these sort of more relaxed options, if you will. Crank the drive up a bit. <laughs> make it a bit crunchier but you can try all these different options some hard clipping something crazy maybe like a linear fold or a sine fold which just absolutely demolishes the noise let's go back to tube and just give it a little bit of drive here I like to add some hyper dimension usually, not so much the hyper, but a little bit of dimension and bring the size down. This is it without the hyper dimension. And this is with. giving it a little bit more beef in the stereo field. This is it with no effects on. Bit boring. And then we got all our effects on. And then like to usually chuck a little bit of compression on here. Let's put this after everything and turn on multiband mode and then back off the threshold a little bit. Back off the mix a little bit. And that just really crunches up the high end. That's sort of like having OTT built into Serum. So that's without. And that's with. Way crunchier in the high end. Now you can get wild here as well. You can put chorus on there. Which gives you even more sort of phasing and different voices moving around. And then I like to put phaser on, but usually slow the rate way down and maybe just like less than 50% in the mix. Now, if you're starting to feel like you don't have the low end that you want anymore, the nice thing about Serum is you've got this sub section where you can just put it directly out. So bypass the filter, bypass all the effects. So you're not messing with the low end and that'll add subbiness back into your bass patch. I like this big fat sine wave here. Sometimes I, I, I like the uh, saw uh, or the square waves as well, but let's go back to the fat sub. Now another thing you could do, instead of using the sub within Serum, you could just come over here, chuck an EQ, filter out the low end, and then go ahead and put your own sub, which gives you a lot more control. But for today's purposes, let's just go ahead and use the internal sub for simplicity. Uh, let's get the chorus out of here. It's getting some weird phasing and maybe back off the phaser a little bit. So there you go. Now we've got a pretty interesting sounding Reese patch and we've gone over filtering, we've gone over FM synthesis, effects, pitch bending, and automation. And with those tips, you should be able to now make pretty much any Reese you could possibly want. So thanks for stopping by and we'll catch you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.